Good afternoon, everybody. Well, good evening, I should say. <laughs> yeah, we're we're on the late shift, so yeah, it's good evening, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, tonight's stream. Um, so yeah, we're back to Ace Attorney Chronicles again. Now we've got one last part of the first case to do. I have no idea how long it'll be, but we'll see when we get to it, won't we? Um. Excuse me. Just need a drink. <sighs> so yeah, last time we uh we managed to this after we discovered the uh that there was actually a woman at the uh, victim's table. We got her in to do some cross-examination work. It looked like we had her in a corner, but then of course she manages to get a way out, and it looks like we can't do anything. Looks like Rionosuke's gonna be a guilty. But then we get some help. Oh, look at that. I should, uh, I should, <laughs> I should make sure Facebook isn't open. Uh, so yeah, um, so, uh, what's his name? Kazuma's, uh, teacher's, uh, assistant arrived with a new piece of evidence that brings us back into play. So let's see what we got. So yes, part three. I have no idea, you know, the last two parts were like an hour and a half each, but we seem near the end, so I don't know if it'll be it, <laughs> if it'll be any longer than an hour, to be honest. But we'll play it and see how long it is. Let's go. Twenty second November, one fourteen PM, Supreme Court of Judicature, courtroom two. So here we go. Well, I understand you are the judicial assistant to the defense, but why this sudden ingress into my courtroom? Ha! A judicial assistant? A woman no less. There you go. There's this eighteen hundred sexism for you. <laughs> state that females are not permitted into this court of law other than to testify there you go <laughs> Jeez. yes I fully understand I ask only for five minutes of time I have some vital evidence that I must hand over to the defense ha! you're too late little girl this trial has already been concluded five minutes I will not allow a moment more your Excellency! I am most grateful. Here we go. The evidence is going to turn this trial around. Um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, there's no time. Please simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something. Written in English. Huh? It's Gisele Brett's research. Oh ho 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 ho! <sighs> the English woman's? After the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical facility and borrowed this paper. <laughs> borrowed, yeah. Like, yeah, like there. Uh... Oh yes, that's right. Miss Brett was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So, does this research, whatever it is, have something to do with this case? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't been able to listen to the proceedings of the trial myself. Oh no, of course not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Special characteristics of curare and its effects on human subjects. Interesting. Curare? What's that? I've never heard that word before. I haven't either. <laughs> Time's up! The prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom! There was too little time for me to read it in detail. England is my city. <laughs> I thought you were Scottish, Martin. <laughs> but I've summarized what I could on a note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over it. This is wonderful! Thank you! Giselle's report has been entered into the court record. Goodbye then, and good luck. 
thank you so much. This is just the evidence we need, isn't it? You have had long enough, Council. We cannot detain our English guest any longer. Ooh. She's, maybe she knows we've got her research. I ask the prosecution and the defence now one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to present to the court? I presume not, but let's have a look. Let's have a look at this new evidence. A report detailing an unknown poison that Miss Brett has been researching during her time at the university. Oh, poison! <laughs> oh. Let's see. A poison made from the bark of certain trees in the jungles of South America. The hunters of the region have used it since ancient times to inca incapacitate their prey. Special characteristics, effects, instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minute doses. Route of entry, the above mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound, such as that inflicted by a blowpipe dart. Okay. Practical applications. Due to its ability to render the human body paralytic, it's believed that the toxin could have an application as an anti-anesthetic. However, a solution for the repository the respiratory arrest caused as a result of the full body paralysis must be found first, or patients would die of suffocation. Oh, I see. Yes, I am still on the tutorial. <laughs> this this first case is long, alright? It's much longer than most others. The prosecution has made its case convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add, Your Excellency. Ryanosuke, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yes, I know. There you go, proper fist bang, <laughs> desk bang. Your Excellency, the defense does have new evidence. Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Brett? Yes, Your Excellency. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could grace us with your presence a little longer? It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid. It's not very long until tea time. I'll have to politely decline. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realize it was phrased as a question, however. I must ask you to treat that as an order. <laughs> that shut her up. I've said it many times before, but the Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, counsel. What is the new evidence that demands the court's attention? Well, we got it right here, don't we? Take that! Yes. Oh yeah, I forgot I was using a controller. Because it was much easier to actually go for everything with a controller. Is it a second? It's just connecting. Miss Giselle Brett. We understand you were studying under Dr. Wilson at Yume University, doing research. Research, by sheer coincidence perhaps, into a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this, Council? A toxin known as Curare, Your Excellency. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. What? What complete and utter nonsense! C cure air, you say? I've never even heard of it! You wouldn't have done. What do you mean? I mean that you wouldn't have even heard of cure air before for one very simple reason. It doesn't exist in our country. It doesn't exist? Correct. Which means... No matter what tests the police can do for toxins, they'd never identify Curair. Yes, there is no Edgeworth yet. <laughs> they always introduce the Edgeworth in the second case, Martin. I'm sure you know that. You've played these before, right? Why? Because there is no test available here that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. What? <laughs> Order! 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 Council, 
Does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authored by the visiting research student from England, Cure has long been used by the tribes people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems that it's reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists. To lace their arrows? The report states that it is produced from the extract of a tree that grows deep within the Amazonian jungle, and it was first brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. It claims that animals shot by arrows laced with curare suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sum it up, Miss Brett? <laughs> Attention! Trumpery! These aspirations are utterly trumpery! <laughs> to start with, if the victim had been administered some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been squirming and writhing in pain and the other diners would have surely noticed. Hmm, that is true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Obviously, I would have noticed a disturbance like that. Hmm, I don't remember anything like that either. I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. According to this, however, it's the other way around. What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress is evidence that Curare was used. Explain yourself, Counsel. The moment these toxins enter a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they were in total agony, there would be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible! Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor. But with a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could largely go unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. But after a short time, the paralysis is so severe, it causes the muscles that control respiration to fail. Respiration? In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. And all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. My god. That's, that's a horrible way to die when you think about it. Jeez. Poor professor. That's hideous! To the observer, it would look almost like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim himself, his final moments would be a living hell. That is the true nature of this deadly curare poison. And you're suggesting that this bottle, Council, actually contains this terrifying poison? Attention! This, this, this is all very convenient, isn't it? A hither, hitherto unknown poison for which there is no means of testing? What a happy tale for the defence! Ahem, if I may. All these facts! You think you're so clever! Whoa! It is you! Who must be taught? Of, of course! Dear lady! <laughs> Here we go. So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? You steal another's honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them? I'm appalled! What a loathsome act! Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime? That really is a loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? Objection! Enough of this! I, for one, refuse to accept it! The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the great empire of Japan is... is... breaking the rules! <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, excuse me, your excellency? Y yes, Miss Brett? 
May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Um, well, uh, yes, I don't see, um, why not? What's she gonna do? Oh, she's gonna drink from it. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, I see you at game. Don't get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Sorry? To an Englishwoman such as myself, this whole affair is a farcical comedy. Your little police games and these foolish court romantics, it's laughable, really. <sighs> but I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the games to end. Cheers. What the? What is she doing? No. <gasps> Wait! What are you doing? Hmm. No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for this shabby affair. <laughs> so, she's either committing suicide or proving that there's no poison in it. We'll see, won't we? Goodness! Whatever is the matter? You all look quite stunned. So? No cure air. The bottle was clean. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you look quite incredulous, little boy. But of course... That's the simple truth. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. <laughs> Thank you, waiter. Now then, your excellency. Ah, um, yes, Miss Brett. I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough of my time. For the furtherance of friendship between our countries. Ah, yes, dear lady. We are most gratified with all the assistance you have given. Looks like... We're out of options. This doesn't make sense. There had to have been poison in that bottle. So how? How did she... How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? I don't understand it. Well, I suppose if nothing else, this little Far Eastern charade... Will make for interesting conversation at the next party I attend in London. There. There has to have been poison in that bottle. Doesn't there? But there can't have been. Because otherwise she would have ne keeled over dead. Come on, Ryanosuke. We have all the clues now. That bottle of water. Hmm. Let me have a quick look. We gotta have a bit of here it goes there you go root of entry root of entry she can drink it but she can't have it in her blood the culprit did put cure air poison into dr. Wilson's carbonated water I the defense refuses to change its position. You're serious? Objection. Fool! Are you blind? There is no possible way that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw! Miss Brett drinking the water from it? That's right. Which rather complicates your argument, I think. And I believe that complication can be explained. How exactly? I need to think through all the things that don't quite add up here, one by one. I'm sure the answer is in the evidence we have in the court record somewhere. It has to be! Very well. If the defense truly intends to assert this claim... <laughs> then I must ask you to support the ass assertion with evidence. What explains how the witness was able to consume this supposedly poisoned water unscathed? It's all in the evidence. 
The answer to this riddle is right here in Miss Brett's own research report. Attention! That's not a valid explanation. No? After all, we don't speak English. That report is not a gibberish. The, this impudent young scoundrel is trying to ridicule the court, Your Excellency. I'm not trying to ridicule anyone. Honest, I'm just reading Susato-san's notes. I concur. This report is too extensive to be considered in its entry entirety by the court. You will direct us to the pertinent section council. Which section of the report reveals the alleged answer to this riddle? It was practical applications, right? Special characteristics. We've been hearing a lot about this curare poison. And it's left me curious about something. Oh, council? Well, it sounds as though as though indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years. To lace the heads of the arrows that they shoot at their whatever prey they're hunting. So we've been led to believe, yes. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please! But if they were to use these laced arrows, doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey of the hunters that were going to eat? That were, oh, wait. That, yeah. Doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey the hunters were going to eat? Yes, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, would they? Because then they'd be eating poison. Good gracious, Council! No, that would be madness! But I actually found the answer to that conundrum. In this research paper here. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say? I see, that makes sense. Yes, the mention of that particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you interpret what's written like this. When Curé enters the body through an open wound, it has terrifying poisonous effects. However, when it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever. What? Miss Brett. You authored this research. You knew Courier's special characteristics. And you knew that you could make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... Oh my god! Rapscallion! God, her hat's alive! Well, Ryanosuke, it turns out... You're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. <laughs> really? Me? A lawyer? Attention! Oh! All this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But I fail to see how it possibly... <laughs> so, the ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with. Some facts he read in a book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish? He is a student. <laughs> flaw? As even your brain has managed to deduce, Curare is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of that gastric succius. Oh, yes, well, of course. Gastric suckers? What are they? <laughs> So, if this lethal poison is completely harmless and drunk, the professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? Ah! That's right! Good gracious! That's basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand, no? But if he had a tooth removed, there'd be a wound, wouldn't there? See, I've got the. I, I could be smart sometimes. <laughs> order! Order in the court! Order! The logic holds. 
If the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they would be affected in the same way. Are... are you trying to suggest? Yes! This cure poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial! That's right! Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that! She's rattled. She's rattled. <laughs> what is this welling up inside me? I've never felt like this before. It's sort of a conviction to break down all the discrepancies. It's so intense, almost rage-like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. There you go. Objection. Objection! <laughs> I don't think so, Miss Gisele Brett. How, how dare you use that tone with me? You know very well that there is no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though you, both you and the victim swallowed the same poison. You are alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead. <gasps> <laughs> Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you. You must provide compelling evidence. As we now know that the poison is completely harmless when ingested. Why would Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the curator? Well, it's obviously the dental treatment, isn't it? And there's an entry for the day. Extraction was used with, an anest with use of an anesthesia. Yep, and it sounds like just before he went for lunch, he had a tooth removed. I'm pretty sure this is what we use, right? Now, because I'm never sure, I'm never sure of myself when I do this. Because he had medical procedure. Take that! As Miss Brett so readily pointed out, she drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference? Haha! <gasps> <laughs> The toxic effects of Curare are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So, for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But... What if there was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poisoned water? Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have if you had just been to the dentist. And had a tooth extracted, for example. Ah! Ah! Oh! <laughs> yeah, boy! Miss Brett, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ah! <laughs> that was a weird yelp, sorry. <laughs> so that's it. You use that knowledge to orchestrate this. Is, is she laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are also puerile. What, what do you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. Huh? You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. No! I mean, it could just slip. Oh. Oh dear, how careless of me. No, that's cheating! That's not fair! I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. N no! What is it? What just happened? It's the English woman. She just smashed the bottle. And in the Supreme Court. What a terrible blunder. 
Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect up as much of the water from that broken bottle as possible, at once! You're wasting your time. This delightful carpet under my feet here was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither the technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. <laughs> How could you? You... You won't get away with this! You can thump the bench and shout as much as you like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle or not. You. And let us not forget, we still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, counsel for the prosecution? Oh, of course, of course! You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady. That's right, and really, looking at this photograph, it's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me. So of course the only person who could have shot him from the front is the little schoolboy. Objection! No! You killed the victim that day, using cure air! And then, in order to frame Ryonosuke Narahodo for the crime, you waited until he picked up the pistol you'd arranged for him to find on the floor before you shot the professor's dead body in the chest with your own hidden gun. Then, in the confusion that followed, you, all you had to do was to turn the dead professor in his chair around. You see? You had every opportunity to commit this crime! <laughs> what a wonderful imagination you have, young man. <laughs> a hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have a shred of evidence. Exactly! And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. Don, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to the chest. Delivered in cold blood by the accused Ryonosuke Naruhodo! Ugh. Hmm... This is unbelievable! How can this be happening? We had her, but now... Is she really going to get away with it? The way she destroyed the evidence was obscene! Ryonosuke... Yes! We've come this far, but now... You're the only one who can finish it. What? What do you mean? We've lost a vital piece of evidence, it's true. So if there are any clues left for us to use now... They must be in your head. In my head? You told me before that your powers of observation were the one thing you could re really depend upon. Well, yes, that's true, but... But I didn't manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. So think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw. Everything you felt. Every color. Every smell. Ha! <sighs> What I saw, what I felt, every color. Oh, blood. Oh, there's blood. <laughs> Is Kazuma right? Somewhere in this vibrant memory of this same scene in my head. Could there be another clue to expose the identity of Dr. Wilson's killer? Now there is a clue, isn't there? <laughs> Actually, Kazuma, I think I might have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have uncovered another clue. Haha, <laughs> you always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Ryonosuke? Come on then, let's wipe that smug smile off that English woman's face with some evidence. Alright, I can't wait. It's been niggling me for a while that something feels amiss in my memories of that day. Whatever it is could be the key to arriving at the truth about all this. It's here somewhere. That clue that shows who Dr. Wilson's real killer must have been is... <laughs> Take that! Inspector Hosanaga, answer me this! 
Yes! What is it? Ugh, he's still miles away. Probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. As you've said a number of times now, you strive for the perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely. I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything else from the scene of the crime. Like, for instance, the plate of steak that you took to the victim's table that day. Attention! Wait a minute! Where are you going with it? <laughs> Where are you going with this little boy? It's just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? I saw the scene shown in this photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate that was steak was served on was a spattering of blood. What? Oh really? And what of it? Obviously that must have happened when you shot the professor. No, that can't be the case. Huh? Take a good look at the photograph and the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak is almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front, there's no way that blood from the victim could have been ended up directly behind him! Ah! Hmm. Hmm, yes. For blood to have made it onto the plate, it implies the plate was between the victim and the shooter. Which means the shooter must have been sitting opposite the professor as you were... Giselle Brett? I beg your pardon? Attention! This... this is beyond ridiculous! Fabricated nonsense! Is the court seriously expected to believe something the accused has apparently just remembered seeing? Hold it! Who's that? Ooh, there he is. This... This could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Inspector! You mean... Yes, I took the plate, in the interest of preserving evidence from that scene of the crime. I took it, meat and all, and I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief because of it. You did what? I took the steak that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak that the sergeant had been eating. And I did it all in the name of justice. Then we can find out for sure whether or not there's a blood stain on Miss Brett's plate. We must examine it now. Well, here we go. Inspector. The court wishes to examine the plate from the victim's table immediately. Yes, sir. Here we go. Sorry for the delay. Here is what you ordered. The steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there blood on it? Of course there isn't! Quickly, Inspector! The blood man! Show the court! Of course. Examine the plate at your leisure. <gasps> no! It's clean! No. No blood. No blood anywhere. But, but no, that's impossible! Shit. I know I saw it. I'm sure of it. It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. <sighs> what an unbecoming expression, little boy. You see, this is why I can't say you can't trust what the Japanese tell you. Ah, I couldn't agree more. In this case, in the case of this disgrace to the Empire. I believe we may finally have reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempt at courtroom proceeding is painful to watch. I, but I do promise to do my best to forget all about it when it's over. Oh, it's so close. Ha! This sorry looking state reveals the fact to all too clearly. If 
if the sorry looking accused wishes to examine it again, be my guest. The plate of stick has been entered into the court record. There's one last chance. Was the plate I saw, or I thought I saw, just a figment of my imagination? This is it now. I've lost. Ryonosuke. It's not over yet. Not until the final gavel. Hmm? Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward no matter what. Alright, come on, bring yourself up, Ryonosuke. Believe in myself? Really? Hmm, maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. As the evidence requested by the defense has not been shown to the prob to, be pro to be problematic in any way, I presume any further examination of evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. Does the defense have any objection? That blood stain was going to clinch the trial for me. Can this plate of steak reveal any other clues at all? Yes. Yes, I'm sure it can. I mean, we lose otherwise, don't we? <laughs> Your Excellency, please wait! This plate of beef is hiding another clue! Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth! Objection! The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beefsteak! Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination in this trial. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I'm completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a newly affirmed ally of my country, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. Counsel for the Defense, you will now clearly show the courts what you are alluding. Where precisely on this plate of beefsteak is the new clue to be found? Hmm. Right. Um. Uh. Huh. I've come this far and I have no idea. <laughs> uh, the tray is the same. Uh. This is a. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> I suppose I've just got to examine. Is it that? Got it. Nope, I didn't think so. <laughs> no, counsel, I'm afraid that won't do. That was ambiguous at best. When you're asked to identify a detail like this, you must do so knowing there is a penalty for mistakes. Hmm. It says turn it over. Uh. Uh. I mean, I think there's only so much I can do as well just to bluff my way through it. I mean, that's what Phoenix does, right? He just bluffs his way. Ah. Huh? What the? What in the world is this? I think it's a Koban coin. And a hallmark is from the Hoi era, I believe. I can't see the coin! God damn it! No, no, I don't mean what is it. I mean, what's it doing there? Wait, did you say it was a Hoi Koban? Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. Hmm. This isn't the first time today that there's been talk of a Hoei Koban. I've heard of pearls before swine, but I've never heard of bullion in bullion. And I don't think you ever will again. This is extraordinary, though. This means... There it is. There it is. I certainly never expected to find a precious coin underneath this thick cut of meat. And it's from the Hoei era, too. That would make it really quite valuable. It's where well marinated in the juices as well, look. What? Are you thinking of eating it? No, no, but the next time I order a steak in an expensive restaurant, one thing's for sure. My heart's going to be racing if I lift up the meat and peer underneath for a prize. 
I think you might have the wrong end of the stick about this, Ryonosuke. A Koban coin underneath the stake? There's only one logical explanation. Got it! Good... Good gracious, that's... Uh, uh, uh. Koban? What on earth? A hoey era one at that. Miss Brett, this is in fact the beefsteak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, is it? Tell me, why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? What a ridiculous question! How should I know? I've never seen that thing before in my life! I don't know what this is, but I want no part of it! I fail to see how this is relevant! A coin under the meat? That could simply have been a careless mistake by the chef in the moment of distraction! Objection! <laughs> That's not likely, is it? Don't be absurd! We're supposed to believe that this happened by accident in the kitchen? A rare Hoi Koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll rip up my ticket to Great Britain right now! He's right. It can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency! Yes, Council? A rare Hoi Koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak? If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now! <laughs> By all means, don't let us stop you! No one invited you anyway! <laughs> Perhaps, little boy, you should realise that it is you who is irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here? <laughs> the point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what it's doing under that stake. The owner? Yes, it's obvious. There's only one person it can belong to. The owner of the Koban that was found underneath the beefsteak is... Take that! This guy. Obviously, it can only be... The antique dealer and owner of Rasute, Kyurio Kurekutak-san. Kyuri? As in Mr. Cucumber something? Honestly, these Japanese names are all quite unfathomable. Ah, yes. The old man who testified earlier alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Koban coin when it happened. At exactly the moment the gun was fired, The gunshot interested me interested me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Hunting for treasure. Indeed! The Hoi Air Koban! My prized coin! Then this Hoi Air Koban? Do, do you mean to tell me? Objection! No, no, no! Please, why would Kurikuta-san's Koban be sandwiched between the victim's beefsteak and its plate? It makes no sense! <laughs> He's got a point. It does not make any sense at all. Yes! Which is why I'm asking to bring Kurikuta-san back to the witness stand so we can ask him. Officer! Bring both witnesses that testified earlier back in here! Without a moment's delay! Boy, this case just keeps going and going, doesn't it? <laughs> Pretty intense for the, uh, uh, the beginner case. I can't believe we've come back round to that pair again. But I have a hunch, a strong hunch, that if we chase down the real significance of this Koban, we'll find it's a key element in this case. My oh my. <laughs> well, this is quite the big... Uh, Witness stand, isn't it? <laughs> What's this all about? Why have I been called up again? Don't you realize it's dinner time for my little baby Ido? When my son's belly is empty, he's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police we were, like miserable dogs forced to bear false witness. And when cast from this courtroom myself, I became a ruined man in a trice. A worthless, withered antique. Nothing more have I yet to say. The sun has set on this Rasute shop owner's existence. 
Be that as it may, Kurekuta-san, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Rasute memory serves, have you ever come across this? Rah! That's, yes, that's it, the one, the very one, the exact, very, very exact one, that is. The resplendent, splendiferous high treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. It can't be. Hmm, as I thought. Young man, enlighten this decrepit old fool. Put me out of my misery. Where? Where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwiched between a beefsteak and its plate, soaking in the seasoned meat's juices. S -s sandwiched? S -s soaking? S -s Seriously? Clearly, it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my holy treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate? WHO WOULD DO SUCH A THING?! SUCH, a, such AN UNCONSCIABLE THING! <laughs> That's the thing. That's the big question though, isn't it? Excuse me. Could I say something? Yes, of course! Proceed, Inspector Hosonaga. I mentioned this earlier on in the trial, but I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. La Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm. Wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in undercover, is it? Yes, I took on the job of waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm. So unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work at the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hid Karekutis Koban is all too clear. What?! Watch! I would like to hear the defense's views on this matter. Tell us, who is the despicable scoundrel that stole Kurokita-san's Koban and hid it under the stake? I mean... She says she eats there often, didn't she? I'm pretty sure she's mentioned that in her testimony before. Hey Synth, <laughs> nice to see you again. Yes, seems like a likely candidate for a Koban thief. No, come on, Ryanosuke. Huh? Y you shot me, Kazuma. Not as much as you shocked me. No one could ever approach the table unnoticed. Even if you're a crazy fool, you wouldn't have missed that. I'm not sure you should be calling Kurekuta-san a crazy fool, Kazuma. It's you who is a crazy fool. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough. I don't believe I can have heard you correctly, Counsel. Let me hear your opinion on this matter again. Tell us, who was the despicable scoundrel that stole Kurokuta-san's Koban and hid it under the stake? Hmm. Huh. Is it the professor, do you think? Oh, Phoenix isn't in this game, Synth. Uh, we're following his ancestor, Ryanosuke. It's a 
shame I can't. It's a shame I have to just. I feel like I'm having to do a stab in the dark. I've got three chances, but I can just reload, can't I? So it's not like it's successful. No. <laughs> oh man, I'm no good at this part. Now you see how bad I am at Ace Attorney games. But I still love them. Hmm. I can't. Uh. Oh, man. I mean, it can only be one of these two, then, isn't it? Oh, these three. Hmm. Boy, oh boy, this is not easy, is it? <sighs> you saying no, sir? Take that! Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it can only be you. Sergeant Ian Easa no sir. What? How? How dare you, 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 you monster! Monster? I stole that Koban, did I? I'm the Master Thief at La Carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, Cadet? But it wasn't me. It was Ido. Ido is the mastermind behind all this. Nanny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Blaming your child, that's so... What? That's messed up. <laughs> you would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son, an innocent little baby? It is you who's the monster sergeant, no sir. You... Oof. The fuck? <laughs> Nepal Imperial Army, Sergeant E. A. Asanosa, preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir. Okay, that's one crime figured out. Do any of you know of the extraordinarily low wages the Nippon Imperial Army pays those it expe expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts remains in place. And I have heard it's hard to lower ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? The place is heaving with money. Every three days, I'd go there and do reconnaissance for a target. And I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. It sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork even, which is worryingly believable. <laughs> And your target that day was the old man and his Koban? Uh, yes, sir. He was an easy mark. I slipped the coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm, a veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the stake and I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I do too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could, on the double. I slipped it under the stake, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. So what does this have to do with Miss Brett? 
That's the one issue we have now. <laughs> it's all quiet now, isn't it? This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett? Oh, of course, dear lady, of course! How rude of us! I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all! May the esteemed gentlewoman please be excused, Your Excellency! Hmm, indeed. The theft of the Koban was clearly perpetrated by this baby-saddled sergeant. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. N nonsense is it? Ah, uh, um, well, oof. <laughs> and as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Very well. Now that all questions concerning this witness's testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. And good day. You're done now. <laughs> it's just hitting home. Ryanosuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there's a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard! Sorry? You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over! Wait, Miss Brett! What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Ryonosuke? <laughs> the sheer nonsense of such an idea. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see some evidence, Council. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? The knife and fork on the table! <laughs> if it was his steak, it's been swapped out. The photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred. What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. The steak that Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed? Yes, go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed? Now you're just splitting hairs! Not true. Doesn't something about this steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. <gasps> I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Notice what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed... No Englishman could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. 
course she did. She's a, fi she's a refined English gentlewoman herself. Then take a good look at this steak. In particular, the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Got ya. Ah! <laughs> it looks like Miss Brett has realised something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Attention! But, what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously hungry and couldn't stop. <laughs> she would never admit to doing that. She's too refined for that. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I am about to put this rookie in his place. <laughs> Ooh. I've heard enough, you irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Of, of course. Dear lady. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She's realized the, catas the catastrophic implication these teeth marks in the stake have for her. Ryonosuke, do you know where you're going with this? Yes, now at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in a stake that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the bloodstain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all, who shot Dr. Wilson that day? I give Miss Brett credit. It looked like we had her at one point and then she was able to uh, weasel her way out of it. But there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. I accept that these teeth marks in the stake are a little unnatural, as you put it, Council. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase, typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Has it been? What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. Attention! This is absurd! The trial has run several hours already! And you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward? There can't be! I don't believe you have it! Objection. I don't. But there is someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. Oh. And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request of the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth of the whole affair? Hmm. I think it's him, isn't it? I think it has to be him. Since he was the one serving that day, right? Take that! The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosanaga. What? Uh, I have it? Yes. <laughs> you... You think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous! 
No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on this stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good stake. And, was, and as well as admitting to stealing Korakata's sans coin, he told us that he slipped it under the stake. You, you watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put the coin under, in fact, your own stake? Tear shut! Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nosa's meal. Objection! But that makes no sense! That plate was taken from the victim's table! Objection! Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her stake, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly! Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over? Well... <laughs> You did switch the plates! <laughs> I love the baby as well, it's great. Well, after it happened, the, um... When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hit the coin underneath it. But then, when the waiter announced he was undercover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, there'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my stick with the one of the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have. I, I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what I had to be done. Un Unbelievable! <laughs> However, fear not, Prosecutor-san. What now? I swear on the brass buttons on my uniform that all I did, that is all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant! Yes! <laughs> well, how the turntable. Yes, <laughs> indeed. So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's steak and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosanaga! Yes? Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's stake after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That to, pr that to preserve evidence, you had taken both. Ah! <laughs> That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot! What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat? I can't have the slightest bearing on this case. Objection! No, you're not wriggling your way out of this one, out of it this time, lady. I I beg your pardon. Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you, no? You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. 
The reason the defense asked to see that plate was to confirm something the defendant remembers seeing. <laughs> Thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson. There was a clear splattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beefsteak and plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. You can already see it, can't you? You can already see the blood from here. Sorry to keep you waiting. Ha <laughs> ha! Here is the other steak and its plate. Please, feel free to examine it. The blood stain. It's clearly visible. Look! Yes! Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Narahodasan to have shot the victim. Ah! It, it can't be! In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. Ugh. Um. That's right. Miss Gisele Brett. It's you! And now everyone else has left the stand. We did it. Oh no. The swan is dead. <laughs> Outdone. By a Japanese? Me? By a Japanese schoolboy? No. No. No! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh no. Oh, a little black one. Oh, <laughs> adorable. <laughs> Wow, okay. Guess we'll see you later. <laughs> oh man, what the hell? Oh, I love it. He's a little black one, hey, yeah. <laughs> deary, dear me. Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett? I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth this time. <sighs> Gladly, Your Excellency. Well, here we go. The truth. It was I who took the professor's life using Curare. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you planned to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water. Because Curare is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water and it would all be over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone. And leave immediately, however. Before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. 
In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralysed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point. So I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I mean, this is what happens in a lot of these cases. They have to improvise, and then, you know, improvising also means you're not going to be as thorough and uh, careful. I happen to know that Professor was always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of Curare in my handbag. And... My own pistol concealed under my skirt. Ah... Uh, under your skirt? So I was right. There were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun, as I'd intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick up, the, pick it up. Mm. That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point, he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed Narahodo-san was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor and his chair around. Because, of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. And there you go. And that's the crime and how it was committed. Are we going to actually see her eyes this time? Or is she always going to hide them? So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Which leaves no room for doubt. We did it, boys! Your Excellency? Yes? I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhodasan. There we go. <laughs> It would seem, this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement? This, this can't be! Taketsuki Auchi does not lose! Not to the likes of this, this, rookie student! You'd better start getting used to tough opposition. Ah! Ryanosuke Naruhodo! Uh, yes? This insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgotten! You've become conceited with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It is the way of the world. May you never forget that. <laughs> there goes his top knot. <laughs> Uh great. A thousand millennia may pass, and still the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Naruhodo clan. Making a reference to Phoenix and Payne's rivalry. Well, you call it rivalry, but... <laughs> this trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Ryonosuke Narahodo, presented an excellent case. I... Thank you, Your Excellency! The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern mythology. 
After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what would it look like? I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Aosugi. Yes. After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you were able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Ah, never mind. As for you, Ryonosuke Narahodo. Oh, yes? In you, I sense, how can I put it, unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency! <laughs> yes, he's got to go on the, the witness stand, doesn't he? It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryonosuke Naruhodo. Not guilty! Yeah! <laughs> Sakura petals. <laughs> nice. This court is now adjourned. So that first case was about four and a half hours long. <laughs> I remember the first case in the first Phoenix Wright is like half an hour, if that. <laughs> this is a very, very marathon game, evidently. 22nd November, 2.46pm, Supreme Court of Judicature, Defendants Anti-Chamber 5. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial! Ryonosuke! You finally pulled it off! Congratulations! Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, no. It was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place on Yume University Street. Don't forget! Good afternoon. All of your hard work has certainly paid off. Nice. Congratulations to both of you for proving Narahodo san's innocence. Ah, our trusty judic judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do anything. Thank you so much! If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Brett's, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind word should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susato Mikotoba, judic judical assistant to the defense. Speaking of Mikotoba... Ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. Th thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you, after all. Your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yuma University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably that's when you met Dr. Wilson? Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. 
Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn, Asogi. <laughs> Great Britain is in a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all that I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asogi clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. <laughs> that reminds me, what happened to the woman? To Giselle Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future for Shanghai. What? Shanghai? <sighs> Political... It's, what, what do they call it? Diplomatic immunity. That's probably what she's gotten. Giselle Brett... Giselle Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Inspector Hosonaga! It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate- But- But what about all this consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner to her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then, who? Who's going to bring to justice? A British consular court will hear her case somewhere far away where our voices can't be heard. But why a consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then, so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments, they can't invoke a consulate court just like that! Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret agreement about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student... Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppance for her. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. <sighs> well... That sucks, but I sort of expected that when she asked to see the judge in her in his quarters after the trial. It was always a low likely outcome. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make it change. This is a time of great turmoil. This new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. Evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor... <laughs> You're right, this is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryonosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. In that case, might I suggest Nick Carnival? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with an ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hosanaga-san, 
aren't you? <laughs> Let's not worry about details for now. <laughs> As he's bleeding from his mouth. <laughs> to La Carnival! Will you accompany us, Professor? Of course! La Carnival's food is second to none! I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Narahodo san's release. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yep, leave all the paperwork to the women. <laughs> That's the 20, early 20th century for you. Sir Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I... I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma? Yes, Ryonosuke? I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. You really saved my skin today. <laughs> I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm. I'm not so sure about that. Hmm? To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one who's destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious. If I help you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. And now you see where Phoenix gets it from. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal com combat? I never want to go through that ever again. I just... I just did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Ryonosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? <laughs> no. The ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you choose to believe is in even then. Well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm. Believing in your clients. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stop believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stop looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it, through your own efforts, and because you never stop believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryonosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is... Ah, you're still here, are you? Inspector Hosanaga! I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go! Thank you. We'll be right there. Wow, that was... That was timing wasn't it let's pick up this conversation again later we should be celebrating right now your first court victory and your study tour of great britain don't forget ah yes that too so my very first trial came to an end kazuma Professor Mikotoba, Suzato-san, who acted as my assistant, Inspector Hosanaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> He's like, what? 
It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favour of me. Little did I realise just how much it would change my life. You did it. So you know what that means? We're gonna find out next time. Which will... Which is probably going to be Monday. So, it's, it, it, you know, we, we don't, we're not going to learn his favor. The Adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band. Interesting. <laughs> so with that said, guys, thank you very much for watching tonight. It's a pleasure as always. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the new loot route start for Muvlove Love Extra. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Sleep well.